everyone, welcome to Birds of a Feather. Today, it's Gnome for the Holidays. Just got this kit from Kim and Garrett of Kim and Garrett Make It, and I'm so excited to give this a try. Um, I'm going to link to them in the description, and I encourage you to go check them out, and of course to follow them. So let's just see what we've got here. So this kit is MDF and it comes with various components and they're all interchangeable. But what I'm going to do is instead of painting, I'm going to do a little bit of felt work on here. Um, and of course a little bit of painting too because I am going to use this stencil. And this is a sweater stencil from Funky Junk's Old Sign Stencils. So I think that's going to look fabulous on the hat. I might even decorate the mittens if I can with some of these smaller elements. So let's just see what I have. Two mitts. These go underneath so that you can actually slot in some of these seasonal elements here. Let's just check these out and see what we've got. So this particular kit is fall winter. Got a pumpkin, a snowflake, a wreath. My favorite, the maple leaf. Go Canada. Another pumpkin and a heart. How sweet. I'll make good use of that in February. So I'm going to set these aside for now. We're going to work on that later. This is the stand, the nose, the two mitts, a couple of hats, so you can do a few interchangeable pieces here. This is the beard. The hat will go on like that. Now the nose, I think, gets glued to the bottom of the beard so that you can just slot that right in. But because I'm gonna have a little bit of extra thickness, I'm gonna have to put some felt on the back of this too, just to raise it up so that when I slot the hat in, it's gonna fit. So I have to remember to do that. So let's just grab one of these hats and set the rest of this aside. Oh, I forgot to mention, I'm going to try to electrify this with these moonlights. And uh, this is red in color. I think it's going to look really cool against the gray of the hat. Um, this is my first time working with fairy lights, so we'll have to see how that goes. Set that aside for now. I've got a decorative iron here from my iron collection. I'm back with an X-Acto knife and I've just cut off a fresh blade, put that in the garbage safe, safely later. And the great thing about this is that you can extend it so that you can run it right along the edge. That's cutting really beautifully. So I'm just going to continue to go right the way around. Okay, so that's done. Beautiful. I also want to show you that you can take a Sharpie and turn your piece upside down and then just trace around the edge has to be a fine Sharpie so that you can get really close in. Okay, I just want to show you that I did do that for this piece. Cut it out with scissors and it fits perfectly fine for these smaller pieces. It's just a little awkward to do something this small with the blade because it just doesn't get into these curves and the tight corners here. So let's just cut this with scissors. 
and we're flipping it around on the back side so that if we do miss the line, I don't cut all that accurately myself, um, then you're not going to see the marker on the right side. Okay, so there's our other piece that's right side up. Let's just see the fit. And it is just slightly too big. I don't know if the camera can pick that up. You don't get as close with scissors as you do with the blade. But I mean, you can go around and just hold it there and try to give it a bit of a trim. It does get in pretty close. There, that's a lot better. The scissors does just fine. I've got two mittens. So I'll be gluing these down, but not until after I think I stencil, because it'll be easier to stencil on a flatter surface than it will sort of up in the air on these little biscuit things. So yeah, I guess I'll get set up for paint now. Now it's time for the next step, which is this sweater stencil. And we'll get going on the pink component. I've got my stencil taped down over the felt. I've got a piece of plastic underneath just in case anything spills. And I'm going to be using a bright white called Icicle White. Just give it a shake. Now typically I'd use a stencil brush. Something along the lines of this with natural bristles. But today I'm going to be using this foam dabber. Just going to dip it in and then I'm going to pounce it on. Actually, just out of curiosity, let's just see if it's any better with a stencil brush. I think the stencil brush might be doing a better job. Because I can swirl it. And I'm really curious to see if I'm going to get any paint bleeds. So I'm just going to take a peek. Looks pretty good actually. I know you can't see that yet, but I'll reveal it to you when it's done. Let's just make sure it's back on the marks and tape this down again. You know what, I think I'm going to use a combination here. I think I'm going to do my initial layer with the dabber. And then once that's on, I'll just come in with the paint stencil brush. Yeah, I do like the dabber for the initial coat. It does seem to get it on a lot faster initially. And then I can come in and just drag the paint off the edges of the stencil here and just swirl it onto the fabric. So I'm going to proceed with these. The dabber does a good job of getting the paint on pretty fast. Stencil brush seems to like really get in there. Just make sure you've got good coverage. And if you can see a lot of gray peeking through, just touch up where you can. Okay, now for the trees. I do want to get these just a touch darker, so I'm going to go over this just a little bit. I think that's looking pretty good. So. Let's peel this up and see how it's looking. Okay, so I'm going to continue the pattern and then I'm going to proceed to do the mitts and I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do. Maybe these um, little clovers here. We'll see. The paint is now dry to the touch so I'm going to put the stencil back on and complete the rest of the hat and there's these little triangles so that you can line up the tips of the trees 
and I'm just going to get them lined up right over the top of what I've previously done. And that looks good right there. So I'm just sticking this down so it doesn't shift on me. Just one more piece here. Sure you're still lined up. Let's get this finished. And make use of the paint that's on the stencil. You can just drag it right onto the fabric. Waste not, want not. And that looks like it's gonna be it. Not a speck of paint left either. So let's peel that back and see how that looks. Isn't that lovely? I'm really liking that. You can get different colors of felt and do different patterns on the hat so that they are interchangeable and that would be really fun around this season. You can also um, do themed stencils on the hats. So for instance, if I was doing Halloween, I've got the pumpkin accessory here. You could stencil pumpkins onto the hat. If you wanted to do a Canadiana theme, you could do maple leaves. The next step is to paint the beard and the snowflake, and I'm using a color called Chantilly Lace. I'm just gonna give that a shake. Pour a little bit into the lid here. Just catch the drips with my sponge brush. So I'm just gonna brush that right on. To get the edges, brush down from the middle, the center outwards. That way you can keep the edges clean. Because right now the edges are black. And if at all possible, try to keep the paint off the edges. And that's done. You can set that aside to dry. Now the snowflake is gonna be a multi-step process. I'm gonna start off with a layer of white. And again, here I'm going from the middle outward, turning as I go. Dip into more paint when you need it. I'll just grab it on the edge here and finish off. And that's done too. I think I did drip on this edge here, but that can be cleaned up with some marker on the side just to blacken it up. So I'm going to set that aside, let it dry, and then I'm coming back to do the stand in black and I'm going to set up with some new paint and wash that up. Next up is the stand in a color called wrought iron and I think I probably thin this paint to put it through my paint sprayer so it's a little watery. And again, brush out from the middle. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna let that dry, I'm gonna clean up my brush. Right now, I'm gonna do the little booties and I think texture is everything. So I'm using this um, textured burlap paper here. Let me just make sure I'm getting that even with the bottom. And again, I'm using my ultra fine tip point Sharpie. So I'm just gonna trace around.
So that's the shape I'm going to need. And the reason I cut on the back of this is because if I miss the mark as I'm cutting, I don't want to be seeing that black marker line on the right side. So I am going to cut off this piece because that will impede it going into the stand, I think. Okay, so I'm going to cut out for the beard and then I'm going to glue that piece on. I'm going to try this Pro Bond glue from Elmer's. I don't know if it's going to work, but I'm going to give it a try. Just going to squeeze it on. I've got this glue spreader here. Just going to spread it around. Probably should be doing this on a piece of plastic. This is messy work. Just going to grab the lid here. Okay, I'm just going to get a piece of paper towel. Just make sure you get good coverage. I think I've been a little bit too generous with the glue. Probably take some of that off so it doesn't ooze too much. Let's get that down. Okay, so far so good. I'm actually just going to scrape that off. You don't want anything compromising the fit of the stand. Okay, so that's looking good. Let's just test this out with the beard. That's gonna look good. Just clean that off. Seal that back up going to give this a wash and we'll be back for the next step. The snowflake is now dry and I'm going to be adding a metallic accent just in the middle here. I've got this stencil. I'm going to be using these hearts. Now this is the foil adhesive and for this step I'm going to be using this makeup sponge so that I can dab it on and then dab it right on. So we'll be back as soon as that's tacky. Just gonna carefully lift that off. Rinse the stencil and we'll be back to finish off. It's been over 10 minutes now, so now I'm gonna proceed with the next step, which is applying this foil to the adhesive. I'm just going to place it over and it's going to be shiny side up, dull side down. Just going to take a piece of cotton here. It's just a balled up piece of t-shirt. And give that a rub. Start to peel it back. And I think what's happened is my adhesive is probably too old. However, it does look pretty, even though you can't see a pattern. Note to self to get better foil adhesive. For this step, I'm back to using the Pro Bond from Elmer's. I'm just going to squeeze a little bit into this container. I'm going to take this brush and just brush the ends and then I'm going to dip it right into these sparkles. And let that dry. I'm just going to continue with the glue. And 
dipping in. Just adds a beautiful bit of sparkle. I don't know if the camera picks that up, but it's so pretty. Once you're done with the sparkles, I forgot to mention that I folded this piece of paper in half initially so that I could simply put them back into the jar. All you have to do is just refold it along that seam and pour them back into the jar. So I'm going to set this aside while it's drying. I did add a little bit of sparkle onto the center where I had, ho I had hoped to do the hearts. Still looks pretty. It's beautiful and sparkly. I don't have any flesh color paint for the nose, so I'm going to show you how you can mix your own. It's going to be primarily yellow. Now we're going to use a drop of red. Three. And a little pinch of blue. And for that I'm just going to add some from this toothpick. Not sure if that's going to be enough. Let's just give that a mix and see how it goes. I think it's going to need just a pinch more of blue. Let's give this another go. And you know what, I think I'm going to add a touch of white. Drop more red. And a touch more white. Let's get this out of the way. And get my brush. It is still looking a little bit too orangey. The trick is just to keep mixing it until you're happy with what you have. And there you have it, the nose. Done. I'm going to wash the brush. Because we've got felt on the hat, we have to increase the height of the nose by the same amount. So I've got felt on the nose here. I'm just going to place it on where I want it. Just going to add the hat in place where it goes. And then what I'm going to do is lift so that I've got the nose attached to the hat. I'm going to flip that upside down. I'm going to take my fine marker and I'm going to trace the outline of the hat right onto the felt. I can pull that off. Now I'm going to cut right across that line and then I'm going to glue this bottom half right onto the nose so that I can glue it onto the beard. And then when the hat goes on with the felt, it's going to slide in place perfectly. So I'm just going to go ahead and glue the felt right on. I'm 
make sure your cap is on. And I'm just going to spread it right onto the felt. And that does absorb, so I'll just squeeze another little bit right on there. Make sure you've got right to the edges. And now it's ready to go on. I'll set that aside and let it dry. And then we'll be able to glue the felt right onto the beard. But first, I have something really fun to show you with the hat. The stencil is now dry and I'm just gonna test the um, fairy lights here. There's a plastic tab that you have to pull to activate the battery, so that's out. And I'm just going to flip the switch on. And there you go, red lights. Let's start by unwinding it. So, what I've decided to do is attach this battery pack onto the back of the hat, just underneath the tip. And then this wire is going to come up and around. And on the back, I'm going to make my little slits, poke the lights through. And then to cover this wire, which will actually be sandwiched in between, I'll be covering that up with a pom-pom so you don't see it. So I'm going to set that aside for now. And what I have here is a command strip. It's basically Velcro. I'm going to cut this in half. I'm going to tape half of it onto the battery pack, right in the middle, and press it down. Then I'm going to connect the two, and snap it together. Okay, as you can see, the tab is lined up with the plastic. I've got my two pieces of Velcro snapped together. So let's flip our gnome over, positioning it on, peeling back the adhesive, and just place it in such a way that it's not going to show. So here's my wire, it's going to wrap around to the back. This will be totally removable. I'm just going to let that set up. And let me just show you how that's going to work. So there's the hat. The wire will come up and around and it's going to be in between these two pieces. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get set up and I'm going to tape these down where I want them positioned. And then I'll be taking my X-Acto blade and making little slits in the felt so that I can poke the lights through. I've just placed some invisible tape right along the wire at the tip here. I'm going to bring this around. Trying to keep it as flat as possible. I'm going to apply more tape there. So just tape them into place as you go. I'll place another piece of tape right there. make sure the wire is well secured. I'm 
and just kind of eyeball where that's going to be coming through. Now because I'm only taping this, I do have leeway to lift the tape and reposition if necessary. Now I do want to mention that to prepare the wire, I did cross them over where each of the lights is so that I could then poke it through. Before I get too far along, let's just light it up. Because there was one that wasn't working. Now, when I place it over, I'll be able to see the light coming through the felt. And that's exactly where I'm gonna be cutting my slit. So I think I'm just gonna move this over a touch. So that it comes through the tree. Just try to get some of them through the tree. that down. I think I'm going to take that right there. I actually think I'm going to give one of these a reindeer, a Rudolph nose, if I can position it right. Can this guy be Rudolph? Let's just have another look at where that needs to be. Okay, I'm going to say that's approximately there. Let's stick that down and see how that looks. I think that's going to work. Okay, let's just come down to maybe the snowflake here. This particular set of lights doesn't have too many lights on it, and one is actually burned out right here, unfortunately. It's really too bad. Okay, and one last one. That's the end of the wire. I'm just gonna bend that and take that down. Okay, so there's the pattern right there. At this point, what I'm gonna do is turn this off. I'm going to disconnect the battery pack so that I can just work with this piece. Success. So I can set the body aside. Now I've got just the hat and the battery pack. Let's turn it back on again. I'm going to be very careful when cutting the slits. I think an awl is going to be the best thing for this next step. I'm just going to poke it through. It doesn't quite seem sharp enough, so Come in with the exacto blade. Just give it a little push to open up that slot. And then I'll come right back over and see if I can push it through. Just going to increase the size of that hole. So let's just show you how that goes up close. 
These are already poking through, as you can see. I've got my awl. The next one's going to be right here. I can see the light shining through. Just going to give that a twist to make an indent. Then I can pop this off. Okay, so now I can see where that is. I'm going to take the X-Acto blade. Just poke that through. Then I'm going to take the awl once again. And I'm just going to make that hole bigger. You can see it. Come back over to the light. And just poke it right through. Gotta make sure it's standing for you first. If it closes up on you, just poke it once again. And there. So I'm gonna continue on with this until all of them are poked through. Because of the wiring, I do have some extra bulk here. So what I'm having to do is take the marker and just run some black along the edge here of the wood. And that's so you're not going to see that gap between the MDF and the felt. The other alternative is to cut the hat a little bit bigger to begin with and I'd probably give it perhaps like another eighth of an inch around the entire perimeter and that way you won't have that problem. But for now, using a Sharpie is going to be just perfect. So I'm starting to poke through the lights. Let me just show you that. And to help hold it down as I go so they don't slip out, I've just got some double-sided tape ready to go, ready to peel back as I come along. So I'm going to start on this end. Peel back the tape. Poke the light through. And then that's sitting nicely. So that won't tend to pull out when I do the, these next ones. So I've got one here. You might need to poke the hole through just to get it bigger because it does tend to close up. And there it comes. And just bend it back so that it doesn't want to pop right back out again. I'm going to do this last one. Poke the all through and get the hole big again. And just before I feed that through, I'm going to lift my tape. Peel it right back. Guide that through the hole. And just wriggle it. Wriggle that on. It is a bit fiddly, but the tape does help. So next one in line is this one. Increase the hole. I might just put a little bit of tape right next to that, just to hold that down as I go. Let's put that 
right on and peel it right back. And just stick it down. I'm gonna complete this off camera so that I can actually get in there close up and personal and I will show you the reveal when it's done. So the lights are all in. I'm just about to peel back this last little bit. Now at the bottom I've left it loose, it's not really going to matter, it does overhang just slightly and I think that's just going to be fine. So there we go, so let me see if I can dim some of these lights and then you can see the full effect. Pretty cool, eh? Now I'm going to bring back the main body. And I'll show you how that goes on. Now that the hat is complete, I can then turn this over carefully. And I can snap it right in place and hide it in the back. And the last thing to add is going to be this pom-pom to hide the wire. So I now have the nose on the beard and I just have it clamped until it's dry just as added insurance. I don't know if I need it but I have clamped so why not. I just want to show you that if you have any white seepage over the edge that you can just take a marker and just touch up and blacken that. I just have a little more right here. So just take the edge of the marker and just run it right along. as if it never happened. Now that the nose has been glued and is set up, I can remove the clamps. I can pop that right on. And now I'll be able to set the hands in place. I will be gluing those two. Anyways, I'm going to fuss with that off camera. <clears throat> and then we're going to bring back the base and put it all together the pom-pom. I'm using Gorilla Glue to glue on um, some washers and magnets onto each of these mitts. It has to set up for two minutes and then after that set up it's like a contact cement so you can put them together. So I think it's just been about two minutes for these washers. They're pretty sticky so they're kind of hard to handle. Just gonna go for it here. So there's one done. Just pressing it together. There's the other one. I still have to glue this in place, which I will do in a minute. Now I've also got two magnets to go on the larger gloves. So when you're working with really strong magnets, be sure to keep them apart because they'll want to snap right back together. So I've got one right here. I'm gonna have to clean up some of this 
oozing. So that's done. I'm going to set that aside over there so that I can bring my other one over and set that in place. And again, I'm just going to clean up just anything that oozes out that's overflow. I'm really sticky right now, so I'm gonna stop right here, let this dry, and go wash up. I'm going to let the glue set up for a full 24 hours so that the magnets don't come apart when I try to pry them off. But for now, here it is. This will slot in after, it's just sitting there. So I'm gonna remove that for now. Let's just see if I can get it into the stand. Whoops, forgot to glue the beard on, so I'm just going to spread a little bit on. Just when you think you're done, there's always something you forget. I really should put some plastic down in case this oozes. Okay, so we're going to be back tomorrow after that's dry and put it all together.